Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 11.3 magnitude and direction. 11.3 represents chapter 11, section 3 of the Pearson A level mass, pure mass, year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section. For the vector A, which can be represented in ij notation as xi plus yj, which also can be represented as a column vector xy, the magnitude, or you could say the length of the vector, is given by the magnitude of the vector A is equal to square root x squared plus y squared. This here, ladies and gents, is obtained from the Pythagoras theorem. A unit vector in the direction of the vector A is denoted by A with a hat and is given by the vector A with a hat is equal to the vector A divided by the magnitude of the vector A. Okay, now the vector A with a hat is a unit vector because the length of this particular vector is 1. Here is the proof. The magnitude of the vector A with a hat is given by the magnitude of the vector A divided by the magnitude of the vector A. Now, if we take magnitudes for the top and the bottom, we get the magnitude of A divided by the magnitude of A. This is equal to 1. These are the key facts of 11.3 magnitude and direction. I'll be implementing these key facts within exam style questions. Here is exam style question 1. Given that the magnitude of 2i minus kj is equal to 2 square root 10, find the possible values of k. Let's have a look at the solution. Ladies and gents, I'm going to start by working out the magnitude of the vector 2y minus kj. So we have that the magnitude of the vector 2y minus kj is given by square root. You take the i component, which is 2, and you square it, plus you take the j component, which is minus k, and you square it. So if I simplify this, I get square root 4 plus k squared. Now we are told that the magnitude of the vector 2y minus kj is equal to 2 square root 10. So we can set this square root over here, which is the square root of 4 plus k squared equal to 2 square root 10. Now we have to solve for k. To solve for k, we need to first remove the square root. Hence, we need to square both sides. So we have 4 plus k squared equal 2 square root 10 squared. Okay, so the left-hand side is 4 plus k squared. If I calculate this over here, it is basically 40. So we have k squared is equal 40 take away 4, which is 36. Hence, k is equal to plus or minus square root 36. Therefore, k is equal to plus or minus 6. This completes exam style question 1. Moving on to exam style question 2. Find the angle that each of these vectors make with the unit vector j, round to two decimal places. So in part a, we have 3i minus 5j. Let's have a look at the solution to part a. So in part a, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by saying, let a be the vector 3i minus 5j. We want to work out the angle between the vector a and the unit vector j. To do this, I'm going to start by drawing the vector a on a coordinate grid. So here is my coordinate grid. The horizontal axis is i, which is the x-axis, and the vertical axis is j, which is the y-axis. So the vector 3i minus 5j is basically three steps to the right and then five steps going down. So we have the following diagram. 3i minus 5j. So here is my vector a. This here is a right angle triangle. I want to work out the angle between the vector a and the unit vector j. Now the unit vector j is in the direction of the y-axis. So you can see that the angle that we're after consists of this angle here, which is 90 degrees, plus this angle here, which is theta. So let's start off by working out theta. We're going to redraw this triangle so the triangle looks something like this. Okay, it's so a right angle triangle. The length of 3i is 3 and the length of minus 5j is 5. So from this triangle, we can use Sokka Toa. We've got opposite and we've got adjacent. So we know that tan theta is equal opposite of adjacent, so the opposite is 5, over the adjacent, which is 3. To work out theta, I can simply take tan inverse of 5 over 3. So the angle that we are interested in the angle between the vector A and the unit vector J is basically 90 degrees plus the angle theta. Okay, 
So that there would be 90 degrees plus tan inverse of 5 over 3. If I put this into my calculator and if I round off to two decimal places, I get 149.04 degrees to two decimal places. Let's move on to part B. So now we want to work out the angle between the unit vector j and the vector minus 3i plus 5j. So in part B, I'm going to start by saying let the vector b equal minus 3i plus 5j. Okay, so I'm going to draw this vector on a coordinate grid. So here is my coordinate grid. Again, the horizontal axis represents i, which is the x-axis. And the vertical axis represents j, which is the y-axis. Minus 3i plus 5j. This is 3 units to the left and the 5 units going up. So the vector will look something like this. Minus 3i plus 5j. Okay, so this here is my vector b. I want to work out the angle between the vector b and the unit vector j. Remember, the unit vector j is in the direction of the y-axis. So the angle between the vector b and uh, the unit vector j is going to be this angle here, question mark. That's what I want to work out. But to work out this angle, I'm going to start by working out this angle here. Let's call it theta. Okay, so what we have here is a right angle triangle. So I'm going to redraw the right angle triangle, labeling the lengths. So the length of minus 3i is just 3. And the length of 5j is just 5. So again, we can use Sokotoa. This is your opposite and this is your adjacent. So tan theta is opposite of adjacent. So that would be 5 over 3. And then theta is equal tan inverse of 5 over 3. Now what we want is the angle between the vector b and the unit vector j, which is that question mark here. We know that this entire angle here is 90 degrees. So to work out the question mark, we have to do 90 degrees take away theta. Okay, in other words, we do 90 degrees take away tan inverse of 5 over 3. So if I put this into my calculator and I round off to two decimal places, I get 30.96 degrees, okay, to two decimal places. That there, ladies and gents, completes exam style question two. Let's have a look at exam style question three. In triangle PQR, the vector P to Q is equal to 4i plus j and the vector P to R is equal to 6i minus 8j, as indicated on the diagram. Part A, find the size of angle QPR in degrees to one decimal place. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. Now, to work out the solution to part A, we need to work out the length of each side of this triangle. So let's work out the length of P to Q. The magnitude of P to Q is given by square root. We take the I component, which is 4, and we square it. Plus, we take the J component, which is 1, and we square it. We put this into our calculator, and we get square root 17. Now I'm going to work out the length of the vector P to R, or you could say the length of the side P to R. So the magnitude of P to R is given by square root. In this case, it will be 6 squared plus minus 8 squared. So if I put this into my calculator, I get 10. Right, now to work out the length of QR, I need to first work out the vector Q to R, okay? Or I can work out the vector r to q, because the vector q to r and the vector r to q will have the same length. But anyways, let's work out the vector q to r. Now the vector q to r, ladies and gents, it is given by the vector q to p plus the vector p to r. Okay, so the vector q to p will be minus the vector p to q. Okay, so plus p to r. We are going in the opposite direction. So we have minus the vector p to q, which is 4, 1 as a column vector, plus the vector p to r, which is 6, minus 8 as a column vector. 
So if we multiply 4 and 1 by minus 1, that will give us minus 4 and minus 1, plus 6 and minus 8. So we can now simplify this. If I do this, I get 2 and minus 9. So now I can work out the magnitude of q to r. So the magnitude of q to r will be square root 2 squared plus minus 9 squared. I can put this into my calculator and if I do this I get square root 85. Now let's go back to the triangle, let's label all the lengths. So we know that p to q has a length of square root 17 and we have that p to r has a length of 10 and q to r has a length of square root 85. We want to work out the size of angle QPR. So we look at the middle letter, which is P. So the angle QPR, this is the angle that we're interested in. Let's call that theta. Now, if you are given three sides of a triangle, you can use the cosine rule to work out the missing angle. So cos theta is given by square root 17 squared plus 10 squared. These two are the sides that create the angle theta. Take away the opposite side to the angle theta squared. So that would be square root 85 squared. All over 2 lots of square root 70 and 10. So now I can put this into my calculator. So the exact value of cos theta is 8 square root 17 over 85. So the angle theta, or you could say angle QPR, is given by cos inverse of 8 square root 17 over 85. So if I put this into my calculator and if I round off to one decimal place, ladies and gents, I get 67.2 degrees, 1 dB. So that there, ladies and gents, completes part A of exam style question 3. Let's go. So moving on to the final part of exam style question 3, which is part B. Find the exact area of triangle PQR. Juice. Juice. Okay, so let's have a look at the solution to part B. So area of triangle PQR is given by a half a b sine c so in this case it will be a half multiplied by we can take the a to b square root 17 multiplied by take b to be 10 sine the c is theta now what we want to do is work out the exact value of sine theta Given that, in part A, we have shown that cos theta is equal to 8 square root 17 over 85. Let's go. Now, the identity that we know that connects the sine and cos is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equal to 1. Solid, solid, juice, juice. Okay, so now what we want to do is work out the exact value of sine theta. I'm going to rearrange this. I get sine theta is equal plus or minus square root 1 minus cos squared theta. Now area cannot be negative, area is positive. So for the sine theta, we take it to be the positive square root. So square root of 1 minus cos squared theta. So we have sine theta is equal square root 1 minus, we know that cos theta is 8 square root 70 over 85. We square that. So now we can work out the exact value of sine theta. If I put this into my calculator, I get 19 square root 17 over 85. So now I can take this exact value of sine theta, put it into here to work out the exact area of triangle PQR. Okay, so we have a half multiplied by square root 17, multiplied by 10, multiplied by 19 square root 17 over 85 absolutely brilliant let's go one two one two one two solid juice okay so this over here if i put this into my calculator 
I get exactly 19. And we can stick in unit squared. That there completes part B and it also completes exam style question 3 and this teaching video 11.3 magnitude and direction. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.